I'm here with Victoria McLean and we're going to talk about collecting. Now, we're always amazed at what people are collecting or doing or their hobbies behind the scenes. We never know. We open the door and what are we going to find? Victoria, it's lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me. Not only do you collect models, but you also make props. I do, yes, I do. I, I, I love to keep busy, I love to be creative. And some of your props are small, and some <laughs> are a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger, yeah. Some of them need their own room to, or their own studio. So this is like a Game of Thrones we're talking about here. Yes, it? <laughs> yes it is indeed. Tell me about this throne that you've made. Well, uh, about two years ago, I started getting a little bit creative. Um, I don't like to be bored. And my husband thought it would be a great idea if I started off with something small, like the Game of Thrones throne, which is actually about two and a half metres high. Um, I used nothing but recycled materials. So I think it's important to not f uh, put things into landfill. I um, used a dining room chair, and I basically built around the dining room chair. And four months later, I had a replica that I'd made myself two and a half metres tall of the Iron Throne. Crikey. So <laughs> it's not just stayed in your house, has it? This has been out a number of times? Well, it was actually in my shed for seven months until mm -hmm. a friend of mine posted a picture of it on Facebook and tagged so many people in it. And my phone just went nuts that day. So many Comic-Cons in the UK wanted to borrow it. Obviously, they're Comic-Con conventions where they have artists, actors from all sorts of uh, cult TV programmes, films, and they wanted it for their shows to show off in their convention. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Now, moving on from there, yeah. you also have collections. I do. And who is the idol of all teenagers, really? Uh, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> And you've got some items here that... I made. do. I am very much a collector of the rarer items that were maybe brought out during um, premieres of Harry Potter films. Each one brought out their own. Um, and I have literally, over the past, I'd say, 14, 15 years, been collecting. This is literally 2% of my collection. I have one of the biggest in the UK of Harry Potter memorabilia. Let's have a look at some of the things you've got. Right. A <coughs> um, few things that were given in during premieres. This wand was from the Philosopher's Stone. And then about only about 20 of them were made, and it's worth between three, four hundred pounds now. And it was given away for free. Um, these items I've been very lucky to get at a really cheap price. Uh, this one was from the Goblet of Fire, sorry, the Order of the Phoenix, and it's wood, and again, only about 20 of them were made, handed out to people at the cinema. Man. Of course you can. Be careful. <laughs> oh, and it comes with its own little uh, pen and inkwell as well, which has never been opened. There's Harry Potter fans watching this thinking, oh, my life, they're amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Some people would look at it and think, why? I don't understand. Um, this was, again, this was Philosopher's Stone. Um, it was given to the press. Some of the press were taken on a bus, not knowing where they were going. Um, there was a press pack inside this of all the information of the film, and they got to take this laptop bag home with them. Again, there's only about 25 of these ever made, and it is pure leather and beautiful and worth an awful lot of money now. Yes, it is. Mm. It's even got embossed in there. It Very has, positive. yeah. That is incredible. It took me a long time to find that, and it was actually bought from a gentleman who won us, what was one of the members of the press who were on that bus taken to a secret location, so it's really exciting. Gosh. And when they got to the secret location, I bet they didn't have to find their own way home. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> they certainly didn't. They were treated like royalty, apparently. I can imagine. Yeah. What else have you got? Um, this is one of my favourites. It is a 24-karat gold-plated golden snitch, which is a ball that they chase in um, one of the games in Harry Potter called Quidditch. And it's numbered, this is 1,016 of 5,000. It's a puzzle piece. It all comes apart, it's all magnetic. But again, there were only a few of them ever made. And in the film, did this fly? It flies, it's got wings, but because it's gold, it's very hard to see during the game, and they all fly on brooms. People that watch Harry Potter will know this, but a lot of people don't, so it's fab. I get to explain it. So that is a larger replica 
of what they chase in the actual films. So I should be very careful in case it flies away. <laughs> My heart went then. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a copy of the dragon's egg from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, but it's actually a little music trinket box and it plays music as well. It's almost like a travel journal. It's beautiful. Mm. They're about £300 to £400 now, but I bought, I think I managed to buy that for about £20. <laughs> I was really lucky. That's amazing. Okay. Should I put that there for now? Yeah. I also get a lot of things sent to me by companies, Noble Collection, for example, through Motion Pictures, and they send me freebies for me to show my fans that what they can buy, things like this. Um, this is a Ravenclaw wax seal, and Ravenclaw is one of the houses in Harry Potter. And then we also have bookmarks of the houses there. There's Ravenclaw, Slytherin, Hufflepuff and Gryffindor. The houses. You talked about your fans, so yes. you're obviously on social media. I am, yes, Harry Potter Collector UK on, so on Facebook and in YouTube. You've got so quite a few followers. I have, I've got almost 2,000 followers so far. So, But they love my videos because I'm, I'm a very clean, um, it's a very clean page where there's there's no uh, bullying allowed, there's no swearing allowed, it's all very nice. Um, children are allowed on the page as well to look and they can view what's out at the moment. I get to talk about things I love and they also get to meet me at Comic Cons as well. So it's really exciting. I can feel the passion in your voice. <laughs> just one last final thing. It's not just Harry Potter that you've collected, you've had other collections in the past. I have. Uh, when I was in school, I watched uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer on BBC. Yeah. Um, and I managed over a period of about 20 years collect the biggest collection of Harry Potter, oh sorry, of Buffy memorabilia in the world, which is actually in the attic. I, should, I need to sort out because one day it's just going to fall through the ceiling, I think. It's that much. It's so much up there. You'll have to bring that back again. Oh, you? I will. <laughs> hey, Victoria, it's been absolutely lovely talking to you. Thank you. And looking at these, it's just amazing. Oh, well it's done. my passion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So it's Mike Lee. Back to the studio.